Hi, I'm going to do a, a short video just on um, signing your edition and general um, things about your edition like um, consistency, uh, your paper size, lining up your, your prints, you know, that kind of thing. When students turn in their prints to me, you know, I have a certain expectation of a degree of quality in the prints and in the edition overall. And, you know, over the course of the semester, I will be pointing things out to you that could be improved upon. Um, but I just wanted to go over a few things like signing your edition, um, things like that, storing them, you know. Um, so I do have an edition here. This is from an exchange print that I did a long time ago. And I did two prints that were very similar and I editioned both of them, but I only sent one of them off to the exchange. And it was a it was an exchange of 33 prints. So I still have a lot of these left over. Um, you know, these are th some is something that I might put in um, uh, auctions and things like that. Give them away to people. Um, <clears throat> But anyway, I have, um, you can see the, the edition is all trimmed the same size. This is the lithograph, and it does have a small screen print on the back. Um, but it's not really meant to be part of the imagery. It's not crucial to, this is the front of the image. Now, typically, if you have enough space on your print on the front, you want to sign it typically on the front. Um, there's times when you don't do that, though. And we'll kind of go through a few different examples here. But now when I, when I sign my edition, I'm all done. I've, I've gone through all of my prints. I find the um, five or 15 or 30 or whatever number it is that are all very, very similar in uh, execution. And the, the border is nice and clean all the way around. There's no fingerprints. Um, the print is fully printed, it's not under inked, it's not over inked, it's just right, and I'm satisfied that this image is going to be part of the edition. Um, so I want to go through, eliminate all of those prints that don't make it, and then I want to get ready to sign my edition. Now sometimes what I'll do, especially if I have a large edition, is I will fan them out like this so that I can see the bottom of the prints. This is assuming also that your paper does not need to be flattened. Sometimes you will need to flatten your paper with a heat press. So you can see how I'm doing this. I'm just fanning out my prints. Now I wanna make sure my hands are clean. Um, my workspace is very clean. Everything is wiped down. And you can see how I'm doing this. So can see I would go through my entire stack of prints and do the same thing for all of them. Sometimes I'd have three rows, two rows, four rows, as many as you need. And at that point, you know, I can get ready to sign my edition. Um, so what I would do is probably put something over my page and just that allows me to go through, go down and sign them much easier and it's nice and clean. I don't have to worry about smudging my hand over them or losing track of which number I'm, I'm on. So I would probably go through, typically the title goes on the left, very cl fairly close to the image. You know, you don't want to go into the image, although you can. Um, I want to use an, a nice sharp pencil and usually the title goes on the left in quotation marks and then the addition number. So you can see here, I go from two of 33 to three of 33, four of 33. And then it kind of jumps around because I've given a lot of these prints out, um, given them away. But you can see um, that, so I want to number them one through 33. So the last print in the exchange will be 33 of 33. But you can see that way I can keep track of each number of the print and a collector might buy a print and then they'll know that there's only 33 of these prints out there. 
that are identical. Now, if I do a separate edition, say a, a different type of paper, or a modif I modify the print in some way, I need to disclose that information and make sure that that, that is available because I don't want to miss, uh, I don't want to misrepresent how many prints are out there to a collector. Okay, so, and then once you have that done, okay, so you've got your numbers, you got your titles, your numbers in the center, and then you want to put your signature on the bottom right. Sometimes you could put your year if you want to. Um, I, I sometimes do. And that's it. And so when you have your your edition printed, that's what it's going to look like. It's, it's nice to have your prints all signed and dated. Now, um, for some of those other prints that don't quite make the edition, um, these ones have not been numbered yet. Um, so, yep, and it looks like some of these jumped around a little bit. So, so I think somebody probably went through these um, recently and was looking for specific stuff. But these haven't been signed yet, And but these are all proofs. Now, something was happening with these prints where I, they didn't make the addition. So, like, I can see that this is not as rich of a print as this one. So, that bit... Like, I'm not getting a fully printed black. So that's why this was eliminated. There might have been other issues as well. <clears throat> but that's kind of what I'm looking for. Now, if I want to sign my proofs, um, those ones didn't quite make it to the edition. So oftentimes, you'll see an AP for artist proof. Um, I'm not sure if there's a preference for undercase or uppercase letters but I usually see uppercase AP instead of putting it in the number I would write AP that means artist proof um, another thing that you might see is a P P that would be a printer's proof sometimes the printer will will keep a certain number of proofs for themselves for their collection um, uh, sometimes they seem to be a little bit darker, in my opinion. Now, another thing that you might see is a B, A, P, or capitalized B, A, P. And that would, again, go right where the numbers are. Um, and that would mean Bonatier print uh, or Bonatier proof. Now, a Bonatier print, usually when I'm printing an edition and I finally get, you know, I'm, I'm proofing and I'm proofing, I'm trying to get my, my prints to, to look great, and then I finally hit it and I've got my print, it looks great, that's going to be my Bonatier print or my Bonatier proof. And that means it's okay to print. So, uh, so that's my final proof. Now I'm moving on to the edition. It's also going to be the print that I compare all of my other prints to. If it doesn't make the cut, it's because it was not as good as that Bonatier print or proof. And so if you see BAP listed here, that means it's a Bonatier proof, okay? Um, so let's see, I'm gonna show you a few different types of, um, this is an exchange print so uh, this is from a number of different artists and they've all signed theirs slightly differently. So I wanted to show you a few variations on how you can sign your prints. This one wasn't signed on the front. You see it's unique paper. It's probably Arches paper, um, but uh, it's beautiful. But you can see this person signed on the back and they signed in some sort of marker, blue marker, which makes sense because it kind of uh, goes along with the print and it kind of goes along with that type of imagery as well <clears throat> So unique to that artist and they chose to put the number on the left So there is some variation in that. I think it just kind of depends on maybe it's a regional thing. Maybe it's uh, where uh, You know who you've learned from or which press you've been trained under you know that kind of thing, but Artist signatures, bottom right. So you can see the number is on the left here. Now this is, again, same thing. Numbers on the left, titles in the middle. In this case, it is in pencil, but they did not put the quotation marks. So I guess that's just like, you know, up to the person. Nice borders all the way around. Beautiful print. Now this one is also numbered on the left. And you can see the nice signature. So when 
if I was to mat this, the window would come up to about here and I would be able to read that without having it be cut off. So that's the nice thing about having this in the addition. Yep, so this one is numbered here. Maybe maybe my preference is not the uh, preference of of uh, the majority here. I, th I think most of these people are West Coast though. I think almost everybody included in this exchange print was from Portland, Oregon. So there is probably a regional element to this being um, having the title in the middle and the uh, number on the left. And you can see this one uh, is close to the image. You'd probably have include it with the mat if you were to mat it, but this is a shaped print, so it's kind of unique. Also, if there's, if there's other information that you want to include with the print, you know, then sometimes people do write on the back of the, the prints as well. Here's another one where the signature's not on the, the front of the print, it is on the back. There's another one on the back. And this one does is a little bit unique. I've got a date over here, and then I've got a title, and I've got the, the num edition number on the in the center, and then the signature on the right, so there's another variation. Here we go, here's one with the title, number, signature. So, so we've got some flexibility with that. This is a Japanese woodcut, and you can see that the type of signature and the numbering of the prints is very different when there's a lot of printer marks as well as uh, uh, we'll see more um, types of uh, stamps representing uh, lineage, like who, who is, uh, sometimes you'll see the patron, sometimes you'll see stamps for which press um, the work was created at. Sometimes you'll see watermarks from if the paper was created at for a specific edition. There's lots of variation there. But I just wanted to show you a little bit about signing, numbering your edition. And um, lastly, I think I, I will show you one more thing. Now, on my prints, when I put my prints away, I usually create um, a, a, some sort of document. This is just a really quick one because I probably didn't have anything handy. Um, when I store these, I store them in an acid-free case and I always have something to go along with it that I can keep track of who has my prints. Now, let's see if I have another one here. Okay, this is probably a better example. So if I have this print and it's, you know, put in my storage, um, I like to write down my title because sometimes I've I've forgotten what I've said my title is and I've submitted it to things and then I just don't exactly know what the title is. So I just want to make sure I write down my title. Um, this says etching with aqua tint and soft ground. So I take note of the processes that I did. Um, I write down when I did it, fall 2018. The type of paper that I used is Reeves BFK. The paper size is 10 by 12. The image size is seven and a half by nine. And then I write down that I have an edition of 15 prints. And then um, an artist proof, I keep track of those as well. So how many artist proofs are there? And then if there might be any other significant things, like if I did shinkole on a couple of prints, or if I did some color, added some handmade, hand colored uh, elements to the print, you know, I'll write that down as well. Um, but then also under the addition, if I give someone a print or if I sell a print, then I'm gonna write down which print it is that I sold and where it went. And just so I can keep track of if, if it goes into a collection or not and also how many I have left if I'm selling them on, on eBay or Etsy or one of those types of sites, Instagram, then I wanna know how many I have left. But it's also really handy to have all of this physical information handy so that I don't have to break out a ruler every time I need to submit something to a juried art show because they will be asking the, the size of the paper and the print and if I have one that's framed, that is set just for exhibition, I might write down the size of the frame as well. 
okay? Um, I always keep my best prints. I never get rid of the, the best one. I always keep one of them that is pristine, that is for exhibition only. Um, and then if that sells, then I have to find the next best one that goes in a, into a frame. And that's it. So I just wanted to show you uh, a few little tips about uh, storing your prints, signing your prints, and how to create a successful edition. Right, thank you.